In this video, I'm going to upgrade my temperature game with a screw-in thermistor from PolySci 3D. At least I think that's how you say it. The contents of the package include the thermistor, a 1 meter cable, and some DuPont connectors. We'll start by removing the fan shroud and the hot end, take off the silicone boot, take a screwdriver, and remove the thermistor screw. Cut the capped on tape that holds the thermistor wires to the wires for the heater cartridge. Remove the thermistor, and then cut all the zip ties that secure everything in place. The new thermistor has the same N3 thread as the block, so just screw that in place. Get yourself some small pliers or a wrench and tighten the thermistor to the block, but don't over tighten it. Next, lay the printer on its side and remove the bottom enclosure cover. Find the thermistor wire, which in this case is the two white ones secured by the zip tie that's screwed in here. Remove the screw and pull the wiring out from the cutaway. So there's some hot glue on all the factory connections, so just wiggle that free and remove it before pulling out the connections to the board. Then slide the old thermistor out from the braiding. I'm going to show you a little thing that's been bugging me for a while about a lot of these accessory manufacturers, and that's the fact that they'll supply you with a one meter cable, but on most machines, that's not long enough to fit through the factory loom. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut the quick connect off of the supplied cable and splice it into the original thermistor wire. So at this point, I'll pull the old cable back through the loom and get ready to do that. Now I'll cut the old thermistor off from the original wire. But because the screw-in thermistor has a length of wire already attached to it, I don't have to be overly conservative about where I cut this end. I'll take the new wire, make sure I cut from the right end of it. I'll give myself a few inches and I'll cut it. I'll split the wire with an X-Acto knife so I can strip the jacketing away. I don't have a stripper delicate enough for these wires, so I just strip them back with the X-Acto knife and my fingernails. Once that's done, put the connector off to the side, and then I'll do the same thing to the old wires. I'll be using some heat shrink tubing to cover the solder joints, so I've cut two pieces long enough to slip over the solder joint and have adequate room on both sides to cover the wire jacketing. Be sure to slip the heat shrink over top of the wires prior to splicing together, or else you won't be able to get them on after you solder the joints then twist the ends of the wire together for soldering. Next, I'll grab the wires with my helping hand and use some thin rosin core solder to bond the wires together. I'll do this to both wires and then take a lighter to heat up the heat shrink tubing until it fits snug over the joint. Next, I'll slide the soldered connection into the braiding. Connect the thermistor and tuck the quick connect in there as well. You'll need to find the optimal length of stick out for the thermistor wire to not interfere with the rest of your assembly, which is a little bit of trial and error. Here, I'm test fitting all of the wiring and I have a zip tie loosely around the braiding so it doesn't fray more than it already has. A simple trick is to take a lighter and gently melt the cut end so they don't fray apart like this one was starting to. When you have your wires in a good place, Take some Kapton tape and secure the thermistor wires back to the heater cartridge wires for safekeeping. Then we can reinstall the hot end assembly. 
If you have extra wiring like I do, just find a way to route it around your enclosure so that it doesn't get in the way. I've got some new zip ties with eyelets on them so I can secure them in place with a screw, just like the factory one. And a job well done. At this point, you can reattach your BL touch, put the cover back on the bottom, install some new zip ties, and run PID tuning. And because this is a 100K thermistor, there shouldn't be any major firmware changes that are required. So some takeaways about this style of thermistor is that they should allow you to print around the 300C range safely. If you want to print higher temperatures, there are also cartridge style thermistors you can use that will register higher values. They are a lot more expensive, but there is also that option. The Quick Connect is convenient for replacement in the future, so if you use these and it does start to give you erratic readings, it's a simple matter of unscrewing the current thermistor, detaching the quick disconnect, reattaching the quick connect from the new thermistor, and just screwing the new one in place. And despite the fact that these were designed to be a quick upgrade, never trust a one meter cable unless you have a really small machine. If you have an Ender 2, or if you have any other single arm style 3D printers, I'm sure this cable will work just fine. But anything larger than that, you're better off looking for something that has a one and a half meter cable or you'll have to splice or make your own. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, throw them down in the comment section below. And sharing is caring, so share this video with your friends and try to inspire them to do great things as well. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comment section below. Check out my affiliate links in the description at no additional cost to you to help contribute to the channel. And thank you to all of my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.